Jordan Peterson has no doubt become one of the most influential figures in our culture today. Do you believe in God? I don't think that's any of, I don't think that's anybody's business. I think it's the most private question you could ask someone, but then I would say also, uh, what's the right response to that? By their fruits, you will know them. As a Christian, I think it's really, really exciting to see God drawing Jordan Peterson closer and closer to himself. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you three mic drop moments that he had in an impromptu debate versus prominent atheist Matt Delahunty. Before we jump in, be sure to subscribe to this channel because I'm putting out new videos all the time. We're really ramping up on this YouTube channel, so be sure to subscribe because there's more content coming out than ever. If you wanna go deeper in the Daily Disciple community, subscribe to us on Patreon. This is the way that I can continue to make this content. This is my full-time gig, and AdSense is very limited a lot of the time because of the content that I put out. So that's the primary way that you can support me. It helps me keep doing what I'm doing in equipping people to follow Jesus daily. Now, on to the video. But I, yeah. I, I'm trying to, for years I had this thing going where people would say, oh, and this is kind of what we're getting at from a different angle. I would say they would be afraid of what we would lose if we lost religion. And I basically said, demonstrate to me any benefit. Oh, you'd lose that, art and poetry and drama and narrative why, and story. Why? Are, there, are there no godless artists and poets? Well, there are artists and poets who think they're godless. Oh, dang. So we might have crossed over into a problem area because- Yeah, no doubt. I, there are artists and poets that think they're godless. What could he possibly mean by this? To understand this, and it took me a while to, we need to understand the idea of a presupposition. Now we all presuppose things about our world and we demonstrate we do this by the way we live our lives and the way we conduct ourselves. I have a presupposition that this chair that I'm sitting on will hold me and therefore I sit on it. If I didn't have that presupposition, well, I wouldn't be sitting on it right now. So the fact that I am sitting on it demonstrates that I believe not only is the chair here, but it is strong enough to hold me. Now, an aspect of what Jordan Peterson is saying here, and it can even go deeper than this, but this is just layer one, is that artists, storytellers, poets, they all make a presupposition about the world. The beauty exists, like real objective beauty. Think about it, an atheist has no way to account for beauty. If we're just star stuff, primordial ooze, chemical reactions in meat bags, then there's no more significance that a sunset has and a no more beauty than a sunset has than a pile of trash, like a smelly, stinky pile of trash. But we know this isn't true. We know there is intrinsic beauty to a sunset or a stream rather than like a rotting corpse. Even further still, people that seek to tell stories are imitating the ultimate storyteller, God. And people that create art are imitating the ultimate artist, God, the creator of all creation. When a sculptor is sculpting something, they put the clay on their wheel and they spin it around and around. They're using their fingers to indent, to shape and to mold it into something intentionally, right? Something intentionally, whether it's a bowl or a vase, there's intention behind it. Uh, if you were to operate of an atheistic worldview, right? And you're saying, okay, I am just going to throw this piece of clay on this you know, little spindle thing, whatever you call it. And uh, you know, it'll form itself. No, of course you wouldn't do that because that makes no sense because we know that somebody has to be intentionally behind it to create something of value of meaning. The truth is we are like the child that wants nothing to do with his dad. We change our clothes, we change our name, we move out of the city, we change our occupation, we try to speak with a different accent, we use different mannerisms in his, him, but at the end of the day, we still have his eyes. We can throw off every single belief, custom, tradition that we were raised with, but at the end of the day, we still bear his image. Now in the case between us and God, we have rebelled against our creator. We have sinned against him. We have missed the mark of perfection and yet we still bear his image. We still bear the image of God, the Imago Dei. The funny little additional piece is that we replay the creation story every single week. Six days of work and one day of rest. We've incorporated into our lives. We are truly image bearers and we don't even know it. Or more accurately, we don't want to acknowledge it. I don't actually, I can't draw for crap, although I do draw during the show. Um, but one of the individuals who came to the show the other night 
handed me something that she had spent a great deal of time drawing. She's a wonderful artist. I'm very grateful to get it. And, um, you know, while I pretend to read minds on stage, I, I constantly acknowledge that I can't actually read minds. So I can't tell you whether or not she actually believes in a God, but I can tell you that I actually don't believe in a God, and I could write poetry. But you act poetry. like you do. Huh? But you, you act like you do. Now, I gotta be completely honest here. Dr. Peterson is doing better apologetics than 80% of modern day apologists that I see. And the reason being is he's not getting caught up in the weeds of historical data and archaeology and different theories. He's getting to the heart of it. He says, you act like there is a God. Why is that? You act like there is a God, and yet you say there is no God. There is a keen uh, disconnect here, and we need to get to the heart of it. Because that testifies to what the Bible says in Romans 1. We know there is a God, and yet we suppress that truth in our unrighteousness. And so what Dr. Peterson is exposing here is that there is a disconnect that we say one thing, and yet we act another way because we are in rebellion against God. Now, what's interesting to me is that atheists will often vie for different social causes. They'll be very pro-abortion or very pro-LGBTQ or, you know, whatever else. They're very morally focused and just. They want justice. But in their worldview, there's no such thing as objective justice or morality. It's just, man, we're just a bunch of animals out here trying to figure out things and nobody really knows what is right and what is wrong. So who are you to say that there is an injustice going on? What is justice in a world where we have no intrinsic value or worth? What are human rights in a world where it is just survival of the fittest? You understand to the complete, complete emptiness of the atheistic worldview. That's why you didn't I want to throw like Sam off the stage. No, now you're making a claim. Okay, so I'm telling you I don't believe there's a God. And yeah. your, your response to that is, I really do because I have a moral sense. But my moral sense is utterly without any appeal to a god. Explicitly. Or implicitly. Uh, maybe. The f That's not so obvious. Okay, it's really See, because it's, it's you, easy. Regard, you regard Sam Harris as an implicitly valuable entity. Because otherwise you'd just throw him off the stage. And then the question is, well, just exactly why is he an implicitly valuable entity? I don't What's think your metaphysics of that? I don't think he's implicitly valuable in the sense... <laughs> in the... I don't, think he's, I don't think he's implicitly valuable in the sense that the universe has in, 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 implied that there's something explicit about it. I think okay. you can have a per perfectly acceptable foundation for secular morality, even if it fundamentally centers around selfishness. Mm -hmm. I'd rather not be thrown off the stage. It's in my best interest to encourage that sort of understanding at others, and therefore I will not throw him off the stage. I would rather not have my stuff stolen, and it's in my best interest to encourage others not to do that, so I will not steal stuff, and I will work with others to ensure that the people who steal stuff are punished. Now to give you context to what they're saying here, because it's quite a long chat, they were talking about prominent atheist Sam Harris, and they were joking about throwing him off the stage and whether they would do that or not. And Matt says, you know, he wouldn't do that. And Dr. Peterson, he's saying, okay, why wouldn't you do that, right? Why wouldn't you do that? If we're just all stardust, chemical reactions, if there is no true objective morality, then what's to say that it wouldn't be convenient for you to do whatever you want with anyone in particular? Now, I'm just going to let you guys know, this is very, very unusual. In my conversations with atheists, they will ultimately succumb to the idea that say, okay, you know what, I do believe that people are valuable, but I just don't know why. Or they, there is intrinsic worth and dignity, but I, I just don't know why. I don't have a foundation for it quite. And, and, and they will take from the Christian worldview. But Matt here, he goes a different direction. He says, you know what? I don't think Sam Harris is implicitly valuable. I don't think he has intrinsic worth. No, it's just because I am selfish and I don't want to be thrown off a stage. So therefore, I will not throw someone else off the stage. And obviously here, there are great gaps to this morality too, because it begs the questions to say, okay, well, hey, you want to encourage this type of behavior, but what about behaviors that go unknown? You know, obviously this is something you know, quite obvious and out in the open, so you wouldn't want somebody to pay it back towards you. But stealing something, what if nobody knows? Okay, well, what's the harm 
in that it affects you in no particular way it's not like somebody's going to know that you stole it and therefore they'll steal back from you you can get away with it so why not there's huge gaps to his morality but he's being consistent here he's saying there is no objective morality there is no objective meaning or truth or value within a person and this is a dangerous worldview this is a dangerous worldview. He's being consistent, but it's scary that he's being consistent because of the places that this kind of worldview lands. It is a worldview removed of human dignity and worth and meaning. It leads you into a place of, of hopelessness. And I hope if you're watching this, if you've taken this atheistic mentality on and you're trying to be consistent with it, I would encourage you to rid yourself of it because it's empty. It's, it's, there's nothing there for you. You know that's not true. You know that we have meaning. You know that we have worth. We will all be accountable before God for our sin. We all have a conscience. We know when we've done wrong. This testifies to the fact that there is right and wrong. There is an objective morality. And the Bible says that it's appointed man wants to die. We'll all die, but then we'll face judgment. The question is, will you be ready? And the Bible further says that even if you kept the whole law, all of God's commandments, and yet you've stumbled at one point, you're guilty of all of it. That is an extremely high standard that we all fall short of, and because of our sin against God, we stand guilty before him, deserving of eternity in hell. God has graciously given you a path out of the punishment that you rightly deserve, and he did that through himself, through Jesus coming to this earth, fully God and fully man, without sin to live the sinless life that we couldn't live and to die on the cross, the death we deserve to die for our sins against God. We rebelled at him. We ignored his existence. We lived our own lives because we wanted to, and we ignored the creator. And yet while we were still sinners, Christ died for us while we were still rebelling against him. So that if we would repent for our sin, say, God, I'm sorry, I don't want this anymore and put our trust in him, as our Savior, we could have eternal life as a gift from God, not of our own doing, so that we can't even boast about it. If you're an atheist watching this right now, you have no excuse. If you've been on the edge, if you've been dabbling with Christianity, this is the time. Submit yourself to the Lord. Put your trust in Him. And if you're a Christian watching this, this right now, you have no excuse. You know what to do. You know how to get out there. Your atheist friends family, the skeptics out there. Approach them with truth and love. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow.